Welcome back. So working with in-memory lists is pretty amazing when you want to test stuff, but it can also be a pain. So you'll notice right here the problem for now is that when I read the repository or read the customer the first time, I'll actually get the real customer from our list right here. So it'll pretty much mean that the first time I read my data, I'll get a reference in memory to a specific customer in my list, or I'll get a reference to all customers in the list, but it's actually the real customers in the list in memory. Pretty much meaning that when I'm reading all customers right here, look right here, I'm sorry, when I'm reading all customers right here, when I'm getting them all, like I'm doing right here now, let's just read all, boof, I get all the customers back and their orders are null, that's perfect. But when I read customers by ID and include their orders, I'm still working on the actual customer in my database or in my list, pretty much meaning that I'm going to mess up the customer. So when I do it like this, notice what happens is it starts adding all the order information, that's fine if it weren't because I'm actually writing this directly to memory now, pretty much meaning that when I'm getting all customers again, he now contains the orders as well, right? So you saw that problem. Now the problem is that we're using in-memory list right now and we need to change that very soon. So I'm going to, in a video very soon, I'm going to start working with the empty framework instead because this is just annoying, but we can fix this. And it's actually a good way to show you guys the power of cloning or selecting an object and converting it into something else. Let's try and jump into our customer repository to kind of show you guys the problem once more. When I'm reading a customer right now, I'm actually going and getting the actual customer inside my database, which is right now an object in memory. That's why we're changing it. So what we need to do is we need to first of all figure out this code and start using a link instead because this is old code. So what I'll do is I'll say fake database, give me the customers and actually get first or default to kind of get the first customer that I'm looking for, first or default. And let's just put in the cost right here, let's just put in C actually and say I need that customer's ID to match um, the ID that I'm providing from the outside. There we go. So now we actually return the real customer right here. And again, we still return the actual customer, the, the, the physical customer in memory, that's the one we're returning. We need to change that. And you can actually use something called the select statement to do that. Now the select statement is very powerful and I want to show you guys the select statement right here. I'll just notice, I'll just add it in between. So before I actually return the customer, I just want to do a select right here uh, before I actually return the actual customer. So what I'm doing is the exact same thing, like first or default, I'm going to get a customer right here, but I'm going to do something different. I'm going to say for each customer, I want to create a new customer. So I'm going to make a new keyword. I'll say new customer. And I could just end it right here. It would just mean I'll get a list of blank customers right here, or in this case, a single blank customer. That wouldn't work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new customer like this. I'm going to say his ID is going to be equal to this guy's ID, the first customer that I'm going to find. So I'm going to say C.ID, right? So I'm pretty much just mapping all his properties. The first name is going to be equal to the first name of the customer I'm going to find. The address is going to be equal to the address of the customer I'm going to find. Right? The last name is going to be equal to the last name of the guy I'm going to find. Now, what I'm doing right here is pretty much just creating a new object. And the cool thing is it's a new object, pretty much meaning it's getting a new location in memory. So the guy I'm getting back here now is read only, right? That I change the guy I'm getting back now is not going to change the database. It's just a hoop I have to jump through because I'm using a list in memory. Let's just try and save this now just to show you guys that this actually helps. Running the program again, jumping into Postman, and let's just try and do a send all customers again. And notice orders are blank. Now I'm going to get information about the actual customer. I get all the information that I want. Nice, nice, nice. And when I read all customers again, now you'll notice that orders are blank again because the information I'm getting right here is actually not the in database or in memory list customer. It's actually a clone or a copy of that customer just for the reading. And when I go back to read all customers, it's the real in memory or in database custom I'm getting. I know that was a pretty long video to explain a very crucial thing and that is when you're working in memory you need to clone things sometimes to kind of make sure at least when it's lists you need to clone something to kind of make sure that you don't overwrite your actual in-memory data. That would be bad. That's it for this lesson. Next lesson we're going to have some more fun.